This is the Sony FDR AX700. It has Sony's 1 inch Exmor CMOS sensor. It has a 12 times optical zoom lens. It has a 3 step built in ND filter. It has all of Sony's current picture profiles including S-Log 2 and 3. It has a mic in jack and headphone monitoring. It can record in 4K up to 30 frames a second and 120 frames a second in 1080p. And it also has super slow-mo up to 1000 frames a second using its S and Q function. And it's obsolete. Hi I'm Grant and it may not be actually obsolete yet but with the ever increasing technology and quality of our smartphone cameras does the video camcorder have a place in today's marketplace? I have to admit I find it kind of sad when talking about the traditional video camcorder becoming obsolete because I learnt my craft on the video camcorder and I'm sure many of you out there of my generation did the same. I came through the generation of learning to shoot video on VHS, Super VHS-C, Hi8, digital video, mini DV, SD cards, micro SD cards and now solid state media. I have fond memories and still remember when all of these new formats were coming out and the great expectations we had for these flash new cameras. For example, the last video camcorder I owned was this one here and this is the Sony PD100 and it was a 3C CD camera which shot to the mini DV tape and it was well ahead of its time, quite expensive and shot for its generation, fantastic looking video in the 4.3 format. I still remember vividly being amazed at how compact this camera was and the quality of the video that it was putting out from its 3C CD image sensor. Now I'm sure there are a number of reasons why the traditional video camcorder is dying out and you don't see them around so much and I guess the main one, which is no surprise, is that the quality and convenience of our smartphone cameras now has just got better and better and we have it with us all the time. And I guess one of the key points here is convenience and convenience is king. Another factor that is contributing to the decline of your traditional video camcorder is that our stills cameras now that we've often had with us such as your DSLR and mirrorless cameras can not only shoot great stills but they can actually now shoot really good video. Now you only need one camera that can shoot both great video and great stills at the same time. Whereas your traditional camcorder even though this one can actually shoot stills they are primarily designed for shooting video only. Also there has been a rise in popularity of your niche cameras such as your action cameras like the GoPro. These are tiny, robust, waterproof and relatively inexpensive and they can give you shots that you were never able to get with this style of camera. We also have drones which now give us the ability to fly our camera up into the air, control it and give us these fantastic aerial viewpoints or aerial shots that used to only be the preserve of large budget productions. And of course all of these different camera options are competing for our dollar. Currently all of the main camera manufacturers such as Sony and Panasonic and Canon are still producing a range of video camcorders but you have to wonder how long that has gone to last. Sony New Zealand very kindly lent me this AX700 camcorder which is actually about three years old now and I was keen to try it out for two main reasons. The first was what do I miss about the traditional form factor of a video camcorder and the second one or the second reason was to test out the quality of this camera which is a couple of years old now because video camcorders used to have a very much they were largely due to the small image sensors they used they had a very much a, a video-ish looking image for the want of a better word so I was quite keen to see if the image quality has improved in recent years from these devices. So in my opinion the one main reason that you might still want to pick up a traditional video camcorder and that is for its lens or its zoom lens. For example this Sony AX700 actually has a 12 times optical zoom and it's not uncommon now to find them with a 20 times optical zoom. Here's a quick example of comparing my Panasonic GH5 with my largest 70 to 200 mm zoom lens sitting next to the Sony AX700 with its built-in lens. This is the largest lens and funny enough the least used lens I have for my GH5 and this is where the Sony camcorder with its zoom range equivalent of 29mm to 348mm really shines. So one lens giving you the zoom range of 29 to 348 is amazing. 
And obviously the applications that you'd probably want to use this type of zoom lens for is sporting events or perhaps you're filming your child at a school graduation ceremony where you need zoom to get in on your subject. And as an example, I've shot a lot of conferences in the past where often you're near the back of the room when you're shooting the, the speaker at the conference. So the first two things that go through my mind when approaching that style of job are what lens I'm going to need to be able to zoom in on the speaker and what audio input facilities the camera has for recording their audio. And this is often where you need professional XLR audio inputs to handle a feed, for example, from the PA system that the speaker might be using in the conference. So what do I miss about the traditional camcorder? And I have to say it is the form factor and the convenience of not having to change lenses, having built-in ND, so therefore I don't have to screw any ND filters to this, this particular lens. So it's an all-in-one recording unit. As opposed to using something like my Panasonic GH5 I'm recording this, or even this Canon 80D where you might have to change lenses, add ND to it, and add other audio inputs to help get good video. There is something solid and familiar about sliding in your hand to the enclosed wrist strap, either using the flip out LCD monitor or the, the electronic viewfinder. And it's just, I guess perhaps maybe it's my generation that we grew up used to this, but I noticed that when my 12 year old daughter who hasn't grown up with these, she was playing around it, or playing around with this camera the other day and she picked it up, she slid her hand into it and opened it up and she automatically had a really solid shooting position. Whereas in the past I've seen her wobbling around holding this and I feared that she might drop it. Whereas she looked pretty solid, the camera looked solid and secure with that form factor. However, in defense of the smartphone, you obviously have the convenience there. You can pick them up and shoot. You generally, unless you're buying or are buying third-party attachments, you can't put any ND on or, you're, or you can't change the lenses. So you shoot with what you've got. Convenience is king. So could you use this camera as a vlog camera? And yes, of course you could. It's not the widest lens, which is, it's about 29 millimeters on its widest setting, which is not an ideal vlog length, but it's doable. It also has the ability to plug in an external mic, so it has mic in and headphone jack for monitoring. So let's switch that mic and see how it sounds. There we go. So now I've got the Wii Rode Video Micro on the top. So yeah, not too bad, I'm sure. And as I alluded to earlier, another traditional criticism of video camcorders is that their, their quality of video, especially when the large sensor DSLRs appeared on the scene and started to, or started to shoot video, the quality of the video just didn't look as good as these. And that was due to their smaller sensor and their larger, or something to do with the larger lens. And I don't really fully understand why the small sensor and large lens compromise was always there. However, I was keen obviously to see how it looked these days and I was pleasantly surprised with the quality of the video out of this camera. You can see for yourself with some of these shots. And was the quality of the video better than shooting with something like my Panasonic GH5? And I'd have to say, no it wasn't. It was close, but it was definitely better than the quality of video I was getting out of my iPhone 11. Overall, I was actually quite impressed with the quality of the video coming out of these, especially now with, I guess, with their CMOS sensors and I think gone are the days, of, especially with the modern cameras of that video look that the older cameras used to give us. During the week that I've had this camera to play around with, I've, I've had it with me a lot and I've asked friends when I've met them having a coffee, for example, would they buy a traditional video camcorder? And their answer was a resounding, no, they wouldn't. Their answer was no, I just use my phone and the quality is good enough. So are we trading off the quality of these larger style cameras for the convenience of our, or using our smartphones these days? And you'd have to say that yes we are. So are these styles of camcorder obsolete? And my answer would be no and yes. No, they're not obsolete because I still think that certain camcorders still have a place depending on the type of video or the intent that you are using this camera for. And as I mentioned earlier, if you are shooting a lot of sports, for example, or if you want to shoot an air show, then you're going to need a zoom lens. So therefore, a specialty camera or camcorder with a good long optical zoom lens is going to be, will probably be your camera of choice. I still think there's going to be a place for a niche camera, which is what they are becoming, for shooting things such as sporting event or perhaps your child's graduation ceremony where you're going to need a zoom lens to get in on the action. 
And also if audio recording is critical and you may need professional audio input such as XLR audio inputs on your camera, then you are going to need a niche video camera or camcorder to do that job for you. Professional video jobs still largely require professional video camcorders and they are still the right tools for the job. And so to the yes part of my answer about the obsolescence of them, and this is where I wonder though, for example, there we still have a large range of mid-range video camcorders being offered by all the manufacturers, so you have to wonder where they sit now, because if you want a specific lens or a specific camera with audio or professional audio inputs, then there, there is only a few of those, so do we need a kind of a mid-range camcorder, such as this one, which doesn't have the professional audio inputs and it doesn't have the largest zoom lens so I don't know I fear for the future of this style of camcorder. So with the ever increasing quality and technology in your smartphone cameras I think yes a large chunk of the video camcorders are going to become obsolete and that makes me kind of sad. That's it from me see you in the next video.